ইলেকট্রন <laughs> প্রোটন আছে <laughs> structure of the nucleus. So I'm like Johnny the nucleus has protons and neutrons in it and around the nucleus electrons orbiting it right now in orbitals so this is a very reductionist method of actually showing it in real life you know that the structure is slightly different than this right you have orbitals which have two electrons in one eight electrons spdf you have one of the shapes it anyway so you have a lot of stuff like this so I can copy this said that this is the basic structure of the nucleus Before we even got to this, before we even got to this, we had the concept of another atom, take a second, a different atom, which was known as the plum pudding model. Take a second. So in the plum pudding model, uh, our the concept of Chilo was that the atom entirely was like a jelly. Take a second. And in jelly model, we had uh, solid pieces. ঠিক আছে তো এরকম ছিল জিনিসটা যেটার মধ্যে ফর এক্সাম্পল দ্য জেলি ওয়াজ অ্যাকচুয়ালি পজিটিভলি চার্জড ঠিক আছে অ্যান্ড দ্য পিসেস ওয়ার অল নেগেটিভলি চার্জড সো ইট ওয়াজ লাইক আ পুডিং বেসিক্যালি ওই দিস ইজ ইউ হ্যাভ দিস সফট জেলি মতো সাবস্টেন্স অ্যান্ড ইউ হ্যাভ দি সলিড পিসেস হুইচ ওয়াজ দ্য পিসেস অফ দ্য প্লাম নাও এই মডেলটা ছিল অ্যান্ড উই ওনলি হ্যাড ওয়ান ওয়ে অফ অ্যাকচুয়ালি ফিগারিং আউট দিস মডেল ওয়াজ করেক্ট ওর নট So the method that we used to figure out if uh, like exactly which design was correct was known as the alpha scattering experiment. Have you guys heard of that? Yeah. Okay. So the alpha scattering experiment, I hope you know how to spell it. So the alpha scattering experiment. We took the world's most malleable metal, which was gold. and we hammered it into a very thin sheet the sheet was so thin that it actually was made of a layer which was maybe one or two layers of atoms take a second which comparatively is extremely thin so erom kore ekta very thin sheet banano hoyse so eta korar pore then what we did is we placed a photographic film around the gold foil take a second a bad diagram but like you know we just have to do with it oops sorry so erokom and ekhane what we did is we placed a source of alpha particles so alpha particles are you guys know the structure of alpha particles right they're basically protons and neutrons so dui ta erokom proton thake ar dui ta erokom neutron thake thik ache so erokom protons and neutrons thake so what happens is 
these particles uh, are released from this source, the alpha source, at really high speed. So, Motomoti, what was expected according to the plum pudding model, alpha particles were like shooting bullets at a pudding. So, if you fire bullets through a pudding, what would you expect would happen? It would literally rip through the pudding, kind of pudding would be all over the place. Would the bullets bounce off the pudding? Impossible. It would just rip straight through. We saw most of the particles did do this, but some of the particles went to this weird behavior. Some of them have these really large deflections. So, you know, money, Vishal, Vishal angle, they deflected or reflected. So, when this happened, this proved that whatever you were shooting at certainly wasn't pudding. So, if you were shooting pudding, it should go straight through, which it didn't. Guys, yes. Let's continue. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry about that, Tala. <laughs> Let's continue. So, we had particles which were passing straight through the pudding, so that means you were not shooting at pudding, you were shooting at something else. So, Rutherford and Duita students, Geiger and Marsden, they actually did the experiment. So, in the experiment, what they found was this, and this gave us uh, that the only possible explanation was. That instead of a pudding, what the structure of the atom was, it was extremely large, and most of it, extremely large money, not atom size, but most of it was empty space. And there was a very, very small nucleus at the center, which had a highly concentrated mass and also charge. Concentrated mass, what happened is alpha particles, when they get little or no deflection. But as they started moving closer and closer to the Ah, uh, yeah, now we are nucleus. The amount of deflection got more. And then I want to point Ashtilo, they almost when you head on Ashtilo, act them, they would reflect back. What's the next step? So you don't go you get like really strong deflections like this. So this explained the scattering that we got. A photographic film, which is like alpha particle hit code, it is exposed. So they would figure out the Kutai Kutai hit code this after a particular particle hit code. Are we coming again? We figured out that this was the uh, layout or basically the structure of the atom. So, we had basically a highly dense charged nucleus which was extremely massive and we had uh, the rest of the atom was empty space, most of the atom was empty space and we had electrons orbiting. So, the stuff that we could tell from the alpha scattering experiment was the nucleus was very dense and highly charged and also what we could tell was uh, that the atom was mostly empty space. Alright, now for the next. Alpha, alpha particles, thin metal foils, provides evidence for the nuclear atom. This is clear to everyone, I believe. More will be silent about. You can talk to your year later. Girlfriend, now. She's just leading you on. Anyway, back to this. So, Akon, that more or less covers this. Describe the structure of the structure of the atom in the nucleus, positive nucleus, uh, positive nucleus, and negative electrons. Describe how the scattering of alpha particles by thin metal provides the evidence of the nuclear atom. Nuclear atom, which is the current model. Take us a jet design term follow query, which is basically that the, the nuclear the, the atom has a highly dense uh, nucleus and most of the atom is empty space. Tap the nucleus. Describe the composition of the nucleus in terms of protons and neutrons. It is already bullet out. See, neutrons con uh, nucleus consists of uh, protons and neutrons. Describe the charges of protons and neutrons. So pro protons have a charge of plus one, neutrons are neutral. Take us it. State the meaning of nuclear fission and nuclear fusion. All right, we need to talk about this. Use the term proton number Z. Use the term nuclear number A and use the term uh, nucleide and use the nucleide notation A X A Z X. You guys know this, right? So just some of you know proton number to be atomic number and nuclear number to be atomic mass. Use and explain the term isotope balance equations using nucleide notation. So we'll talk about equations later. Let's talk a little bit about nuclear fission and nuclear fusion and also the concept of isotopes. So uh, nuclear fusion and fission. So basically, for example, if you were to take, say, a uh, smaller nuclear, for example, uh, hydrogen. Hydrogen is quite a Do you guys know that? Yeah. There's H1, there's H2, 
and there's H3. Take a sip. So this is proteum, this is deuterium, and this is tritium. So basically, one of them is a proton. You can also one of them is a proton, one is a neutron. I told the one of them is a proton. Two of them are neutrons, right? So you know, come. The other question, you don't need to know too much detail about this, but basically, it is possible to take different variations of deuterium and tritium and make them hit each other. Take a sip at high speeds. So basically, you need to put them in under a condition which is extremely high pressure and extremely high temperature. What this does is the extremely high temperature gives them enough kinetic energy to actually overcome their electrostatic forces of repulsion and actually come into contact with each other. And this allows them to bond. Take a sip. So obviously, the X step of ionic occurs in multiple steps, but eventually, what you get is multiple hydrogen atoms or nuclei actually. Multiple hydrogen nuclei fuse together to create helium, and in this process, it releases a huge amount of energy. This process, smaller nuclei binding to create larger nuclei, is called nuclear fusion. Take us. It's very important that a, a process star is entirely based on the nucleus. Take us. So it's not about atomic fusion. Take us. Atom. Well, no, well, no. But to be specific. It is the nucleus of the atom which is in the reaction, not the electrons, orbitals, outer shell, valence, manon, second and tonight. It's the nucleus. Is this clear? So the process releases energy. One common example of where this is happening is obviously in the sun. Take a sip. So there, fusion of hydrogen to helium, and in some cases other stars, more elements, it fuses to create energy. All right. So it is called nuclear fusion. It is a ultra active concept asset. Where larger nuclei, for example, uranium. Uranium, though, you know, it has hundreds, around 238 or 237, depending on the isotope. It has hundreds of nucleons in it. So these nuclei are already extremely unstable. So when they're so unstable, what happens is uh, any small disturbance will cause it to break apart. So in nuclear reactors, what is done is, we have a special, special nucleus asset, uranium. So uh, they are hit by slow-moving neutrons. So slow-moving neutrons are also called thermal neutrons. Take a sip. They slow down by passing them through uh, different materials. Take a sip. The moderators, basically. So when it hits this, it, it's enough energy for it to actually break into, say, separate pieces. And often, yeah, you have new elements which are created. Take a sip. Krypton, tritium, aluminium, molecular element, right? And in the process, it also releases further neutrons and also plus a huge amount of energy again. So again, actually, important thing is that these neutrons, if you can slow them down, they can actually contribute to hitting more uranium nuclei. And the more nuclei they hit, the more number of neutrons you can get. So this is basically a very well-known chain reaction. A chain reaction, though, when it's done in controlled manners, uh, we basically get energy generated in power plants. I show, meaning like you know, highly advanced reactions, reactions, kore tapora ra pani kolam kore, pani fudai. They basically run a power plant. And if we could do this reaction uncontrolled bubble, which we sometimes do, that is when we get nuclear bombs. Take a sip. Those are obviously fission bombs, uranium bombs. That's why, uh, like you know, the world is very specific or very sensitive about which country has how much enriched uranium. Based on that, you can actually make uranium bombs and everything. So this process, where larger nuclei are broken down into smaller daughter nuclei. एक लाख के डॉटर न्यूक्लियर बोले जिन लोगों जो पौधे जिन लोगों के अंदर आस्तीन से ठीक है सर सो एक लाख डॉटर न्यूक्लियर एक लोग भेंगे तब पर यू गेट ऑल ऑफ़ दिस आदर नेस दिस प्रोसेस इस कॉल्ड न्यूक्लियर फिशन एंड दिस आल्सो रिलीज़ेस एनर्जी तो इस न्यूक्लियर फिशन रिलीज़ेस एन so again, there might be a question, how is it possible to make banana shome energy release kolam la, or banana shome energy release kolam la. In the periodic table, there is a specific element, which is basically iron. Iron in niche, fission releases, fusion releases energy, and iron in rupere, fission releases energy. Do you get this? So it's like the boundary is basically iron. Is this clear to everyone? So there are two details like that, you just need to know the basics of nuclear fission and fusion. Yeah, look, that's what it is. Isotopes of Jajinishta, this is basically what we talked about a protonic, the hydrogen acid, thin thorn air, isotope. So how would you define an isotope? What exactly would be an isotope thorn air? It is the same element with the same number of protons but differing number of neutrons. So hydrogen isotope quite acid. Thin thorn air. Sure. Huh? 
This is a misconception that a lot of people have that hydrogen has two isotopes. This is the real hydrogen. It is the ashal. Are you doing this? Money pretenders, knock on. But in reality, these are isotopes of each other. So hydrogen actually has three elements. Sorry, three isotopes. Does that make sense? Shall I clear on this? All right. A regular mother. A year part time. The concept of the nucleus. Mm -hmm. How do you slow down the neutrons or the acceleration? Okay, you pass them either through water, heavy water. Heavy water is a deuterium into water. Mm -hmm. If it goes through the gel, it slows down. Or you can also pass it through graphite. Uh, the next concept of radioactivity. What do we have? Detection of radioactivity. So first of all, there's this concept of. Atta, let's enter the concept of radioactivity from here. All right. So. Radioactivity. What exactly is radioactivity? How would you define radioactivity? Emission of ion and nuclear. Very good. Radioactivity is basically uh, anything which ionizes any any particles or any energy which ionizes matter. So ionizing behavior to it again radioactive. Body. So any sort of ionizing radiation can be considered to be radioactivity. Ionizing of the tomate is the initial thing that is that there are specifically three types of ionizing radiation. What are they? There is alpha, there is beta, and there is gamma. All right. So particles below gul. But it's not entirely correct. Well, they're incorrect to below it, but it's not all particles. Can I? Alpha, you already know. It's basically a combination of two protons and two neutrons. Do you get it? So two ta proton thaklo, two ta neutron thaklo. So this would be the nature of an alpha particle. What is the nature of a beta particle? It is basically an electron. Take okay, us. So that's it. And what is gamma? Gamma is basically nothing but pure energy. Gamma radiation of the EM spectrum. Right. So eta charge koto charge it is a plus two. Eta charge koto minus one. Eta charge koto zero. A regular charge. A regular nature. That with this a mass. If we consider, when an atom proton mass is one, or nuclear mass, neutron mass one, the atom mass is four. Atom mass is uh, you could say one by eighteen forty nine. Let's say one by eighteen two thousand. Let's say one. Atom mass is technically it's zero also. All right. So we're getting this sort of uh, correlation. So these are the different types of ionizing particles. So I'm going to tell you this: How do we detect these? How do we? Uh, what do they do? How do they exactly ionize? Are with us? How do you stop them? Right. So let's talk about uh, how each of these are first. How each of these are created in the nucleus. Take us. So the creation of each of these. So let's start with alpha. All radioactivity occurs due to the nucleus being unstable. So whenever the nucleus is unstable, it tries to become stable. How does it do that? It it either releases matter with energy. Or it releases just energy. Jekunota. So, it, the ultimate target is is to stabilize the nucleus. Nucleus to jano haro stable hai jayega. Does this make sense to everyone, guys? Yeah. All right. So, if it has too many protons and neutrons, what would it do? It's going to cause alpha particles to be emitted, right? So, tomorrow if you have a nucleus, nucleus mein you have lots of bunch of particles and everything, blah 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 blah. Because there's too many particles, it will eject from the nucleus at high speed two protons and two neutrons together, plus energy. Energy can be the form of kinetic energy of the particles, or also in the form of some sort of electromagnetic radiation, like gamma radiation. Usually, alpha shatte gamma radiation bear hote pare. Take us so it is done. So this is why we have the mission of alpha and beta alpha particles. And at a nuclear equation, that I am going to leave it. For example, say we take element A. Jeta with this x and y. So x with this atomic mass, and y with this atomic number. Take us. You might have slightly different variations of this, but basically x and y. So this undergoes nuclear decay to create a new element, say B. The atomic mass will decrease by four because you lost two protons and two neutrons. The atomic number will decrease by two because you lost two protons. Does this make sense? Plus, we have your alpha particle, which is four two, and obviously it is at the energy. Is this clear to everyone? Yeah. This is how we have the process of alpha decay. This is nuclear decay, take a second, and this is the process of alpha decay. All right, this is what the nucleus does 
if it has too many nucleons. Alright? Eta gelo alpha. So similarly, we can see what a nucleus does if it has too many neutrons. Take a What is it going to do? Basically, it will cause one. Eta pay attention to this one. It's a little tricky because I'm going to beta key will slow. It's the emission of a electron. This electron is not emitted from the orbital symbol. It's orbital. It's emitted from the nucleus. So how does a nucleus emit an electron? The jagai nucleus of the electron silo in What actually happens is you need to pay attention to this. One neutron decays. Right? Because it's unstable. One of the neutrons breaks down and it turns into a proton. This proton stays stuck inside the nucleus. We're taking the bite the bite. But during this decay process, it releases two particles. Take a One of the particles is a neutrino. It's a massless, chargeless particle. And also uh, an anti-neutrino, exactly, to be specific, anti-electron neutrino. And also it releases an electron. Does this make sense for everyone? And obviously with this process, it will also release energy. All right. So, the one that you have to be aware of is the nuclear reaction which follows this. So, say we take element P, uh, uh, atomic mass of this Q, atomic number of this R. So during this process, this will turn into element, say, S. And in the process, the atomic mass remains unchanged. Cannot? element n number of, by n, let's take x number of protons to low and y number of neutrons to low. Talakiyo said, during this process, one of the neutrons converted itself into a proton. So the number of protons increased by one, number of neutrons decreased by one. So overall number of nucleons, kintu, it's still the same. Do you get this? So the atomic mass still remains the same. However, the atomic number increases by one because the atomic number is determined by the number of protons. So this becomes R plus one. Plus you get uh, a beta particle, which is basically the electron, which has a mass of zero considerably and a charge of minus one. And also energy. Is this clear to everyone? All right. So I take a look, beta decay. This is what happens when the nucleus is unstable and it has too many neutrons. Next possibility is uh, we have gamma radiation. Take a second. Gamma radiation usually occurs with beta or with gamma, take a second, with alpha. Or it also can happen when the nucleus rearranges during or after a decay process. So what happens is they share. Uh, yeah, the particles move around, rearrange or um, after the decay. So it releases pure energy. Take a second. The rearrangement process releases pure electromagnetic radiation. And ekhane, as you can obviously see, no particles are emitted. No change in charge occurs. Take a second. So if you start with element Z, take a second. Say element Z with W uh, and X, take a second. Uh, this process will not change the element. This will remain as W and X. And with the process, it will release gamma radiation 0, 0. This is the energy by itself. It is energy length of it. It gamma radiation. Does this make sense? All right. So now. Boloto, why is it that element change? What, based on what do we determine the element? On what basis do we decide what the element is? Boloto, is a number of protons in the nucleus, right? So alpha particle decay, alpha decay japan said there was a release of uh, two protons. So that changed the atomic number, element changed. Ekane, it increased by one. That changed the atomic number, hence the element changed. And ekane, there was no change in atomic number, hence elements are not changed. Does this make sense to everyone? So this is the process of uh, nuclear decay and in this process we actually uh, have the explanation behind why each of these happen and how they happen and what they release. Is this clear to everyone? All right. So uh, basically we talked about this. Is it radioactive decay? State the meaning of radioactive decay. State during alpha or beta decay the nucleus changes uh, to that of different elements and use equations involving nuclear notation to represent changes in the composition of the nucleus when particles are emitted. Does everyone have any questions from here? Mm -hmm. Hi guys, any questions? No, all right.